Hello everyone, Tina Gale back with another layout today. This is a single page layout and I'm using the um, Stitch Collection as well as Ellie's Studio Sycamore Lane. I had to stop and think about that because it's butt paper threw me off. But yes, the Ellie Studio Sycamore Lane. And then I have a little bit of the paper from the Stitched Collection. And so when I got this paper here with all these little um, like banner shapes, I knew I pretty much wanted to cut them all apart and stitch them back onto a layout. And that's kind of where this started. And, and then it it's still that, but it got a whole other different direction. So um, I ended up doing it like rays of a sunshine. And so I just cut them all apart. And now I'm just kind of putting them in there uh, arranging the colors to see if I have um, the right colors enough of a, of a break in the different colors because I have that pop of yellow along with a lot of the blue and then a, a gray with kind of a blue cast to it as well. So I just put them around um, how I thought that I was going to use them. Uh, my background paper, I cut it down half inch on two sides so that I could mat it with another piece of the Sycamore Lane paper. And it had all of the great geometric designs on the back. So I like that. So it was just lots of pops of colors. So you can see here the, the background that I used. And a lot of times, I mean, I really like this paper, but a lot of times if I have background papers that I don't really like, then I use them for my backgrounds. Because a lot of times when they're just used in small bits, they're really, really nice. But all together, they're kind of overpowering. So what I'm doing here is I figured out where I wanted each one of the colors. And now I'm just kind of making a mental uh, mark in my head of where the center of this would come from. And so all of my pieces will come from that one piece. A lot of times when you see layouts with these rays, but they seem a little bit off, it's usually because they've not really got a center point to them. And so then it's not really it's kind of jarring to the eye and you'll notice in the end I got a little bit off and so I had to go and, and kind of redo. Now my first intentions were to just leave it like this. I didn't want it to go all the way around the page. I just wanted it coming from the right side kind of in the top of the bottom. But once I get it all kind of trimmed down and put on there, um, I kind of add a piece and I look at it and I decide that I really want it to start getting closer together on the left hand side and to go ahead and go around the page. Now the great thing was since I trimmed off all of the bulk and they were all the skinnier strips when those are the pieces that I'm using on the left side so they're skinnier than the ones on the right and so it makes it look even better. It's um, just more balanced and more harmonious. Um, so again I'm I'm trying to hit that same point that I did, but you'll notice that I got a little bit off and it looks off when you look at it. So, um, and that would be why. So I just trim all the pieces off and then when I put the photo on, I decided I wanted it popped up. So I just used my foam tape to do that. Um, if you use a lot of foam tape, these rolls of foam tape are definitely the cheaper way to go. And so then I had some, some different packages of embellishments that I knew would match with the papers and the design in my tray. And so I'm just going through those and pulling out anything that I think will work. And so I knew I wanted some little pops of black. I have the yellow and I have the blue. And I have these feathers here too because I thought it'd be nice to have just that little pop of red because the background of the photo, the curtain, is a red velvet curtain. So I thought it would work and I really try all the way through but I never do get it to work and you'll notice a lot of times I'll pull out embellishments and I'll start working and then it's like I jump to something else and usually when I jump to something else it's because I just don't have a clear-cut direction and that I want to go and so I move somewhere that I know what I want while I think about the other thing. And so while I had those embellishments, you know, I kind of knew what I wanted, but yet I couldn't work those feathers in and there was some other stuff that I couldn't really work. So I thought, well, I'll just set that aside and I'll go ahead and do my title because I had already 
pulled out my thickers and pulled together my title. And the title is Four for a Dollar. That's the name of this group that is singing. And they used to be at Hollywood Studios at the time that it was MGM. And it was before the Beauty and the Beast show. And so they would come out just like stagehands and they would be cleaning. And then they started kind of messing with the mics and, and playing. And so it would fool a lot of people that they thought they were true stagehands that got a little carried away. But they were extremely talented. And so I wanted to make sure that we got these put in their albums because they're not there anymore. But they were really, um, they had a little comedy act and they sang and they would take requests from the audience uh, from old songs and everything. So it was just really, really good. Just their voices. It would be interesting to find out where they're at now. I'll have to do some research. So, okay, so now I'm kind of back to the embellishments. And you'll see that little black 07. I tried to work that in because that was the year of this trip. And so I thought it would be a fun way to use that because I'm not sure how I'm going to use it any other way. Um, but I never did quite get it worked in either. Um, it was too confusing with the title of four for a dollar. It was like, why do we have four? Why do we have seven? You know, what is it? So I end up leaving it off. But um, on the stickers that I do use, well this one that says high five and this, um, the black one that I'll use later, those came from the Maggie Holmes open book collection. Let's see, no, the black one did. The, the high five comes from Amy Tan Bits. So I, I pulled out a lot of those from the Amy Tan Bits. I used the thickers are from American Crafts and they're the shoebox collection. It's a yellow glitter. It's really pretty. And then the, the four was a chipboard thicker that I didn't have the label and stuff, so I'm not sure where it came from. And the small round circle alphabets, those came from the Fancy Pants True Friend sticker sheet. And then this, um, let's see, the stickers there that I'm pulling off, those are from the Fancy Pants True Friend sticker sheet too. And so I had a couple of those that I kind of moved around. Um, couldn't quite decide where I want it, but I end up settling um, below the picture there. And I have some wood veneers that are just arrows that I'm putting on with my liquid glass. Um, that's my go-to liquid glue for anything wood veneer or things that are difficult to adhere that you don't want to move. Or sometimes your thickers that, that move, I always put those on with liquid glass. I really want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch the videos and leave comments. I've really had a lot of nice comments here lately and, um, and emails and I so appreciate it. And um, everybody that has subscribed, my subscriptions have just, um, you know, every day I get several new subscribers and it's just, it's really flattering. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, this little black piece here, that's the one that came from the Maggie Holmes open book. I just really wanted another touch of black. They're dressed in black. Um, the little circle letters are black. All of the outlining is done in black around the pattern paper. And I'll, I'll go here in a minute and do some pin work with black too. So it was just a little pop. It needed something up there to, to draw the eye back up. And I kept trying to put this little piece in too, but I just had too many words going around. That little sticker that's underneath the title that says the next big thing, that came from the Heidi Swap sticker sheet that you see there to the right underneath the, the wood veneer. And now I really, I wanted some more black. And so since this paper line has a, um, a sketch-like design, I took my journaling pen and just real loosely sketched along the rays of the paper. So the trick to this is to keep it really loose and not do a real solid thick line. And you'll notice that I even have a really sharp angle to my pen and that helps the ink to kind of skip instead of doing a, a solid line. And originally I just did one side of each of the strips of paper and I did it to where the ones that were going downward, I would put it on the bottom side, and the ones that were moving up, I would go to the top side of the paper. 
But when I went all the way around, I kind of lifted it up and looked at it and decided I wanted just a, a little bit more. And so I went and did some more sketching. And in the end, I sketched on both sides of each strips of the paper. And you'll see that in the close-ups as well. But again, it's just a real loose uh, hit and miss line, not a solid pen work. So it really can add a lot to your layout. So that's something that you can try. And so here coming up, that pretty much finishes the layout. So here are some still shots. And again, I really appreciate your nice comments and you coming and subscribing to my YouTube channel and watching. And so I hope you enjoyed this layout and we will catch you next time. Thanks.